welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Courtney and it is my weekly what's for dinner. This week I've got five recipes I'm sharing with you guys. Some of them are family favorites and a couple of them are a little different or a little new. Um, the red beans and rice is a new recipe I've tried. We've had red beans and rice before. This was just a new version plus I added some stuff to it. Oh, it was amazing. Highly, highly recommend that one. I think the rest of them were pretty much recipes that we've done before. I did try a new gluten-free recipe, gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, <laughs> um, when we made pizza, so I'll share that with you guys as well. It was not a winner. <laughs> not at all. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, anyway, you'll see that when it comes up. Anyway, other than introducing the video, I wanted to stop and say a big warm hi and thank you to all of my new subscribers out there. I'm so glad you guys found my channel, and I hope you enjoy all of the content I'm bringing your way. Anyway, let's check out the dinners. I'm gonna let the sunshine in the day. I'm gonna let the past be filled with smoke. And I will try to fix what has been broken. And take this weight off my shoulders, cause I know yesterday ain't coming back. All right, so today I'm going to start the video off with pizza. Um, I didn't make my homemade crust or anything this time. I actually had some pizza crust in my freezer, that, or not my freezer, my pantry. I had picked it up at HEB. It was really well priced. You got like two crusts per package. It was like $3 and some change. I really wanted to try it. My husband, his favorite is a thin and crispy crust, and this came in thin and ultra thin. So I bought one of each, and we're testing them out today. He definitely prefers the ultra thin. It is very thin and very crispy. But for my pizza, I am not one of those people that likes red sauce on pizza. I like no sauce or like a, a garlic butter or a creamy sauce. And one of my favorite pizzas is the spinach and mushroom and garlic pizza by DiGiorno. I love it. It is so delicious. Whenever we go um, to the pizza buffet, well, we don't really do that anymore. We used to go to CeCe's Pizza. I don't know if that's like a nationwide thing or what, but it's just a big pizza buffet. Um, I would always get the spinach pizza because it's phenomenal. It's definitely one of my favorites. Um, we don't really enjoy eating pizza out very much anymore because it is just so, so greasy. We typically just make it at home. But I wanted that white sauce. I miss that white sauce. When I make pizza at home, I typically don't put any sauce on there. And I'll just throw a veggie pizza together for myself. But I really wanted something different. So I've got a tablespoon of butter, about uh, one clove of minced garlic, half a cup of heavy cream, salt, pepper, uh, about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And then I threw in a handful of Parmesan cheese, maybe a quarter cup at best. And I'm just stirring that on low heat until the Parmesan melts. It looks a little bit thick, so I pour just like maybe another tablespoon of heavy cream in there. And that's going to be the sauce for my pizza. This was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now, for all of these pre-made pizza crusts, I did brush the edge of the pizza with just some melted butter that I put garlic powder in. I felt like the crust is always everybody's least favorite. People typically leave it behind. So I put this on the crust to give it a little extra flavor. It's almost like garlic bread when you get to it, and people tend to eat the crust a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to just put a nice coating of that sauce on here, not too heavy, but definitely enough so it's there. And then I just have some chopped up spinach right over there that I'm going to top it with. And then I also have a few veggies left over from the other pizzas I made. Uh, some mushrooms, some onions, and I'm just toss all of that on my pizza. And then I use a cheese combination for most pizzas, which is shredded mozzarella. And then I just buy sliced provolone, like the sandwich cheese, you know. I get sliced provolone, and I just tear it up and put it on my pizza. Provolone is a great melty cheese. It'll give you that really cool cheese bowl that everybody wants when they have pizza. Um, I always like to top all my pizzas with it. So that was my spinach, garlic, mushroom pizza with some onions. It was so delicious. I would most definitely make this pizza again. I enjoyed the crust. I wasn't sure I would because I am more of like a thick crust person, but this thin crust was really, really good. It had a nice flavor. It didn't get overly crispy, but it was certainly not soggy. And the pizza reheated well over the next couple of days. I made this um, and we, I made it on a Friday and we ate it off and on throughout the whole weekend. 
I like doing that so that on the weekends I don't have to worry as much about cooking. Um, you know, we, we go to church and do different things like that. And sometimes I don't want to be locked in the kitchen uh, the whole rest of the weekend. So it's fun to cook something and just eat on it for a couple of days. I did bake these uh, in the oven at 400 degrees and they were absolutely wonderful. This is just a regular pizza. Um, in case you guys don't like spinach, mushroom, garlic, onion pizzas or anything like that. I did, of course, brush the crust with some of that um, melted butter with garlic powder in it. Then I'm using just regular pizza sauce and um, not too heavy, but not too light, you know. And I'm going to top it with different toppings. You can do whatever you want on here. This one, I'm going to do some mushrooms, onions, black olives, and pepperoni. And because this is one I know my oldest is going to eat, I am not putting the provolone cheese on there because he does not like cheese. I also made a pizza that just had pepperoni and black olives on it because that's what my husband likes. And here in a minute, we're going to talk about gluten-free pizza. So if you've been following my channel, my middle son Camden is eight, and he is, uh, for the next couple of weeks, eating gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free to try to figure out what it is that's triggering his migraines. Uh, it's really hard to put an eight-year-old on a gluten-free, egg-free, dairy-free diet. There are not as many food options out there for an eight-year-old as you would think, but we're working our way through it. Something he only recently has really started to love is pizza. He likes cheese pizza, and every once in a while he'll get pepperoni, especially like a Totino's pizza. He'll get a pepperoni pizza, but he loves cheese pizza. And, of course, there's gluten and crust, and there's dairy and cheese, so we were going to try an alternative. I was making pizza for dinner. It seemed like the perfect time to try um, some of the options out there. And lesson learned, it's just not going to work. So I did buy a gluten-free pizza crust, and it's in the freezer section of my store. The crust was okay. The texture was definitely different. It's very sticky. Uh, I had to roll it out between two pieces of parchment paper. I had to add a bunch of additional almond flour to it because it was just so sticky. Um, and this is it right there. I pre-baked it or par-baked it. I don't know which term is right just to kind of firm it up a little bit. And the crust had a nice taste. I tore off a little corner piece there because um, I rolled it out so it's weirdly shaped. I tore off a little piece and the crust tasted really good. It smelled like a good yeasty pizza crust. So I have no complaints about the crust. It was awesome. I put some sauce on there because there was nothing in the sauce that um, that he couldn't have. And then I got this cheese and this is where it went wrong. So this um, is a vegan cheese and it says melty on the outside of the package. I tasted the raw cheese and it tastes exactly like mozzarella cheese. So I was really excited because I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. Normally vegan cheese does not taste like cheese, but this did. So I was really pleased. However, I put it in the oven and I baked it for the directions on the pizza crust and the cheese did not melt. So I baked it another 10 minutes and the cheese did not melt. So this is what it looked like after it had baked for like 25 minutes. The cheese would not melt and it tasted sour, like sour milk. It was awful. So pizza is not a win on this new diet. The other two pizzas, or actually I made three other pizzas, they were all fantastic. Not the gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free. So this recipe right here is what I made my husband for lunch over the past week. Um, this is actually one of his absolute favorite meals. This is my pot roast recipe. There is nothing really phenomenal about this recipe. It tastes amazing. Um, I've never had a single complaint out of anybody who's ever eaten this recipe, but it's so, so simple. And it always comes out tender, like fall apart tender. It's never dry. It's always juicy. The vegetables are loaded with flavor and there's always good gravy at the end. So I just take a beef pot roast and I have used every beef pot roast cut out there. I pop it into my slow cooker in my house. I have a Ninja Foodie. Um, I know a lot of people use crock pots. It works the same in those, but I put the roast in the bottom. Mine was still slightly frozen. And then I pour a packet of au jus gravy sauce on top. And then I add in some diced up veggies. I, my personal preference is um, diced up potatoes, one whole yellow or white onion diced up, a couple of stalks of celery, just roughly chopped up, and then carrots. I like baby carrots just because they're easy. I mean, you don't have to do anything. I just toss them in right out of the bag. Um, if you want, you can use whole carrots and just chop them up. That's totally up to you. You can use whatever veggies you want. If you have other veggies that are your favorite, I've heard of people using turnips. I have no experience with turnips, but I bet that they are really, really good in here. Um, like I said, it's totally up to you. Just put in whatever veggies you want. 
put the lid on and I cooked mine low and slow for eight solid hours and the meat was literally falling apart as it always is. So tender and juicy. So I like to start off by removing all of the veggies and here I'm dividing it up into lunch dishes for my husband. But I started off by pulling all the veggies out and getting them in the bowls equally. Then I like to pull all of the meat out and I just set it to the side because I always shred it up. It's just too tender and juicy to be able to chop. Then I make sure that there's no veggies left in there, which is what I had just finished doing. And then I'm left with all of this beautiful, amazing juice. Um, I don't want to waste this. The stuff is like liquid gold as far as sauces are concerned. You've got your au jus sauce packet in there. You've got those veggies that we diced up and they have given all of their juice and flavor to this. Plus the beef released a lot of its juices and basically just made like a beef broth because we added a little bit of water in there. So this is going to be the most amazing gravy. So I just add in a cornstarch slurry. Now my cornstarch slurries are always um, equal amounts of cornstarch and water. So I did about two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. And I mixed that until there was no lumps and no clumps. And I poured it in here with a bit of fresh ground black pepper. And then I just turned the Ninja Foodi onto the saute function and let it come to a boil. Once you add a cornstarch slurry to something and bring it to a boil, that basically activates the cornstarch and that's when it thickens something. So as soon as it hits a boil, I just go ahead and turn it off because it's done its job. So while that was coming up to a boil, I did go ahead and shred the roast. As you can see, I mean, it's literally falling apart. Um, it is so tender and so juicy and so packed full of flavor by putting it on the bottom all the vegetable juices have run down on top of it and it's submerged in that beautiful gravy sauce. So it's packed with flavor and I mean, it's just so tender, but I just shred it up and then I divide it equally into those bowls with the vegetables. And then I pour my gravy over the top and that is lunch. The gravy does help keep everything from getting dried out if you're going to be storing it in the fridge. And because we, we ate this over, or he ate this over lunch, we had it in the fridge for five days. It never got dried out. The beef was always really, really juicy, tender, and delicious for the whole entire week. So this is one of the meals I was super excited about this week. Um, I'm going to make red beans and rice. I have made this before, but I used a different recipe and I was really, really excited to try it. And oh my gosh, it was the best ever. So I started off by dicing up bell pepper, celery, and onion. Then I had a little bit of salt pork. So I cubed that up and threw it in my skillet and started sauteing it. I added about a tablespoon of minced garlic, which would be like two to three cloves. And I just par cooked this. I didn't cook it all the way through. Just started to kind of soften it up and let it release its flavors and things like that. Then I stirred it into my big stock pot with a whole pound of red beans that I had rinsed and sorted. Um, I imagine you could probably make this with other beans, but traditionally it is red beans. Now, this was not in the recipe. It called for andouille sausage, but I had these little smokies in my freezer and I really, really wanted to use them. So I just cut them up some of them in half, some of them in thirds, depending on how big they were, and toss them in there. Then I'm adding some water, and I'll add a little bit of chicken base in there as well to make like chicken stock because I didn't have any. And then you just boil this for, I think it was like two hours. I'm going to post the recipe down below so you guys can see. I added in a little bit of parsley and uh, some of this creole seasoning. Now the recipe called for like two tablespoons of one kind of Tony Chachery's creole seasoning and then two tablespoons of another. As you can see, I put in one tablespoon. This was very salty after one tablespoon. I am not sure I would ever recommend putting in the four that the recipe calls for. Um, I did add a couple of dashes of hot sauce. We only had the chipotle hot sauce on hand, uh, but it's really, really good stuff. So it worked out well. 
Anyway, and uh, bay leaves. It has bay leaves in it. This was delicious. This was amazing. I served it with a little bit of white rice, which is quite traditional for this dish. Again, I am going to link this recipe down below. It was fantastic and really, really cost effective. Beans are one of those super cheap foods, but they're really, really filling. Rice is also super cheap. It's just a really good, delicious, filling, economical meal. All right, on to the next night. So I am making some taco soup. We have not had this in a long, long time. I'm actually using a different recipe than I used to use just because I thought this one would taste really, really good. I will link it and any other recipe I have, I will link down below. I'll try to list out any ingredients for things that I don't have a recipe for that I think you might need. Um, probably not for the pot roast just because it was pretty cut and dry, you know, roast water, au jus, gravy. But for this, I will link the recipe. Anyway, I started off by browning one pound of ground beef. I'm using lean ground beef. You can use whatever kind you choose. I just had lean ground beef, so that's what I used. I also added in one diced onion to that. I had a small onion. If you're doing uh, like a whole large onion, you might just want to do half. But mine was a small onion, so I just went with it and tossed the whole thing in. There I am using the paper towel trick just to soak up some of that liquid in the bottom. I felt like there was just a tiny bit more than what I wanted. Um, it wasn't like super greasy or anything, but there was a little bit of liquid in the bottom. I don't mind a little bit. It's just when it's some of that out. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and give that a good stir and stop and pull some cookies out of the oven. I had some, uh, some of those break and bake cookies in my fridge and I had completely forgotten about them and they were going to expire in like a week. So I was like, well, that is the perfect opportunity to throw these guys in the, the stove or in the oven right now. So we had some fresh baked chocolate chip cookies. Is it just me or are those break and bake cookies? Some of the best chocolate chip cookies around. They were so amazing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't have anything against the regular kind at the store, but those break and bake are so good. All right, so back to the taco soup. I strained a can of black beans and rinsed them. I strained a can of red beans and I drained a can of corn. Then I tossed it all into this um, this pan with my ground beef and onions and kind of just mixed it around for a minute. Then I added in, it's supposed to be a can of diced tomatoes, but I had this tomato salsa and I was like, this is the perfect time to use this. It was something Walmart had subbed a while back when I was still doing curbside. I have some canned goods I'm still trying to use up that were subbed for other things. But this just seemed like a great time to use it. I am going to tell you, I've never had that before. I did taste a little bit of it. Wow, that is good stuff. So once I mix that in, the recipe called for a whole packet of ranch dressing mix and a whole packet of taco seasoning. I do not like taco seasoning. At first, I was just going to do half a packet because my gut tells me you're not going to like it. But then I was like, just follow the recipe. You never know. I followed the recipe. My gut was right. I did not like it. This is so, so over the top with flavor. Um, the ranch is fine. I really, even if you love taco seasoning, I, I would really, really recommend half a packet. There was so much flavor. It was almost too much. Um, everybody in my household ate it and it was fine, but it was definitely, I mean, it was a lot. All right, so now we have all the major players in the pot for the soup. So I'm going to go ahead and add some water. You don't have to add any kind of stock to this or anything if you don't want to. You could if you wanted to, but this has a lot of flavor going on because we've added the taco seasoning and we've added the um, the ranch packet. So it's really up to you. There's a lot of sodium in this already. I, I will tell you, this is a Weight Watchers recipe. I, I don't do Weight Watchers. This is just a recipe I came across that I wanted to try. I thought it would have a different kind of flavor profile because it had the ranch and the taco seasoning in it. But there is a lot of sodium in this. I mean, a whole lot of sodium because of those um, packet mixes. So keep that in mind if you're making this. I would not advise putting any kind of stock in there just because the sodium content is already through the roof. Um, again, people in my household really, really enjoyed this. I'm not going to say it was bad because it was good. I would make it again, and I would most definitely not use a whole packet of taco seasoning. That was just too, too much, especially combined with the ranch. There was just, ranch is such a strong flavor. Taco seasoning is also very strong. I feel like one of them needed to kind of step back a little bit. 
Uh, but it, it was overall, it was very flavorful and it was good. I mean, I ate my bowl for that I made for myself, so I can't say it was bad. It was good. I did serve this with a little bit of homemade corn. No, that's a lie. It's like the packet mixed cornbread. I mean, I had to make it, but I just added like eggs and water or something and I had cornbread, <laughs> but that's what I served on the sides because we haven't had cornbread in, I don't even know how long. And I had some in my pantry, so I went ahead and did that. I put a little shredded cheese on top. Now, after I tasted it, I did turn around and add some sour cream to kind of tame that that uh, really strong flavor profile. All right, on to the next night. I was super excited about this because it's a family favorite. This is um, goulash, it's my mom's recipe. So you can make this with whatever noodles you want. She always serves it with spaghetti noodles that she kind of breaks in like halves or thirds or something. So that's what I'm doing tonight. I started off with a pound of lean ground beef because I had lean ground beef. You can cook it with whatever kind of ground beef you have or ground turkey or ground chicken or ground pork, whatever it is that floats your boat is fine. Um, we just always do ground beef. So I'm going to go ahead and get that cooking and kind of chop it up with my little meat chopper thing there. I got to say that is probably one of the best Dollar Tree purchases I have ever made. I use this thing all the time and it was like a dollar back when, you know, Dollar Tree was a dollar. Um, that has got to be one of my best purchases. I love this thing. It is so much more useful than I thought it would be. Uh, at first I was like, man, I just use a spatula and chop it up. It's not that big of a deal. But I taught myself into buying one, and I don't think I can go without it now. It is awesome. Anyway, I, I did not drain this beef because, again, it was lean ground beef. I didn't even do the paper towel trick this go around because I felt like it was fine. Um, I, I didn't feel like it had very much liquid in it. It has less than the night before when I did the taco soup. Uh, so to that, I'm adding in some diced celery, diced bell peppers, and diced onions. I'll do my best to list this recipe down below. Um, I didn't really measure. I just go by what my mom says she puts in there, and then I kind of eyeball what things look like. So uh, I use those baby bell peppers, a little mini sweet peppers. So I did four of those and three stalks of celery and half an onion. Nope, nope, I'm lying. I used a shallot because I wanted to get it out of my fridge. Then my mom puts a whole bunch of chili powder in hers, so I put probably like a tablespoon in mine and stirred it up. It might have been a little bit more than a tablespoon, but I'm really going to go with it was a tablespoon. Um... I do add a little bit of salt and pepper in here. And then uh, as far as other seasonings go, I'm adding in this. It's the blended salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I do have some minced garlic in there as well. I'm adding in paprika, not smoked paprika, just regular paprika for this. And then you could put in Italian seasoning, but I'm really just after the oregano flavor profile. So I'm just going to put in oregano. And that was probably half a teaspoon of oregano. Again, if you want to do Italian seasoning, that is perfectly fine too. I I've used it in the past and it tastes just fine. But I'm going to cook that for just a, another minute or two, and then we're going to add in some diced tomatoes. Now, my personal preference is um, San Marzano tomatoes. They come in a can now, and they are so much better than just regular diced tomatoes. I mean, I wouldn't use them for everything, but if you're making some kind of pasta sauce or something like that, the San Marzano tomatoes just really have an amazing flavor profile for that. They do cost a little bit more, but I always think it's worth it. Of course, if you don't want to buy them or you can't find them, it's really no big deal. Just use regular diced tomatoes. You can even use canned whole tomatoes and then just kind of like mash them up with your hands or a meat masher or whatever. That's totally up to you. But I'm just going to add in this large 28-ounce can of San Martino diced tomatoes. And I'm going to simmer that for a little while because, as you can see, there is a lot of liquid. And this is less of a pasta sauce and more of a goulash, um, which is like a different... Um, I guess more like a, almost like a hamburger helper. I don't know, but it's not going to be super saucy like a pasta sauce. So I'm just going to let that simmer for a little bit. And once I feel like some of the, the water has cooked out of this, then I'm going to add in some tomato sauce and simmer that for a little while longer. So by the time I add the noodles in there, it is not saucy. And you'll see that here in just a little bit. And like I did mention, I'm serving this with spaghetti noodles. You can use whatever you want. I broke mine into thirds just because that's what my, my mom does. And so I'm just doing it like she does it because that's what we love. Um, I, normally I would never break spaghetti because that goes against all the rules, but for this dish, I most definitely will. And I just cooked my spaghetti in a pot next to this and then just pulled it right out into this dish with a little bit of the pasta water. Because like I said, once you simmer all this, it's got a lot of flavor, but it's not saucy. As you can see, it is not saucy. So I just dumped all of that. Um, I had the strainer held over the bowl. There was some pasta water in there, and I'm mixing it up. And as you see, there's, like, not really sauce. It's just barely coating the pasta, but this is so, so delicious. My family absolutely adores this dish. Um, I have never made it, and it didn't all get eaten. 
they really, really, really enjoy this. Our favorite is my mom makes it for us. It's probably always better when somebody else cooks something for you though, right? Anyway, I'll do my best to list the ingredients um, down in the description box below, but this is definitely a winner. It makes at least two nights worth of food in my house, sometimes more. Every time I make it, I feel like there's different amounts. I don't know. It's probably just me. Anyway, for the last meal of this night, I'm just making tostadas. Um, I've shown those before on my channel, and they're really um, not like some secret recipe, but I will show you this. So my husband and I went to eat at Chili's um, like a week or so ago, and we got the chips and salsa and queso, and my husband was like, this is really good salsa. I really like it. It has a good flavor. So I just came home and looked up the copycat recipe, and I'm making some chili salsa. You dice up an onion. You're supposed to add in. It calls for half a jalapeno. I thought I had some peppers, and I didn't. So I ended up subbing um, some of that, I think it's called 505 green chili salsa, but I'm also adding in um, a can of Rotel and I'll add in a can of crushed tomatoes and a little bit of cumin, some salt and some pepper and a little bit of garlic powder. This is really good salsa. I mean, really, actually instead of garlic powder, I do believe I put regular garlic in, but anyway, this, this is so good and a pinch of sugar. This turned out really, really nice. And then as far as the tostadas go, I just used flat tostadas, and I put um, refried beans on them, uh, guacamole, cheese, lettuce, salsa. We don't put any meat on ours. You can put whatever you want on there, some taco meat on it if you want, or some grilled chicken or something. We just always do – well, not always, but 90% of the time we do these without meat. It's one of those quick – but really flavorful, flavorful meals that my family really, really enjoys, especially during the summer when it's super hot outside because this is nice and cool and refreshing and has a lot of vibrant flavors going on. And um, I will definitely make salsa this way again. It had a really nice flavor. I think it was the cumin, which is funny because I don't really like cumin. Um, I think it stinks, first off. <laughs> like Just the smell of it is, is not inviting and yummy to me, but I always cook with it when a recipe calls for it just because I feel like it calls for it for a reason, so I always use it. Um, this called for a lot more cumin than I would normally add into something this small, but man, it was really, really good. So I'll probably make this again. Um, and of course, the tostadas, I'm sure you'll see on my channel many more times because as summer rolls around and it gets super hot out here in Texas, and I'm talking like we hit triple digits at least 30 days, maybe 60 days out of the year, just depending on what kind of summer we're having. I'm going to be making some cooler meals, and this is definitely one of them. It doesn't require me to turn on the stove or anything else. It's going to heat up my home. I can heat up my refried beans in the microwave. So this is definitely a meal you'll be seeing again. But I just wanted to share this recipe with you, and I will link it down below in the description box. I found it on Pinterest. Um, I made this a couple of years ago and forgot about it, so I had to look for the recipe again. But, wow, this was tasty and delicious. If you like, like, chips and salsa and stuff like that, this was definitely a winner of a recipe. Now, after adding everything in. I did taste it and added a little bit more stuff in there because I felt like it needed some more pepper. It's not supposed to be like a hot salsa. It's just a flavorful salsa. So I felt like it needed some more of the green chili stuff in there. But I added that in and oh man, this was fantastic. We're actually going to eat the leftovers again tonight for dinner. <laughs> this week. I will be back every Monday with my weekly what's for dinner videos. I also put up a grocery haul every single Friday on my channel. If you're interested, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of my content. I'll see you guys really soon. Bye.